You now know about two important thermodynamic quantities, enthalpy, H, and entropy, S. Physical and chemical processes almost always involve changes in these two quantities. Such processes are associated with a delta H and a delta S. In terms of enthalpy, processes tend to be most favorable when they are exothermic, when delta H is negative. For instance, the formation of chemical bonds leads to a stable, favorable arrangement of nuclei and electrons, and such processes are exothermic. Once you set a piece of firewood alight, for instance, it generally continues to burn, releasing heat until it's just a pile of ashes. Of course, endothermic processes which have positive delta H are possible, even if they are unfavorable in terms of enthalpy. For instance, at temperatures above zero degrees Celsius, ice melts. It absorbs thermal energy from whatever surrounds it, making that stuff cooler. In terms of entropy, processes tend to be most favorable when they cause an increase in entropy, when delta S is positive. As implied by the laws of thermodynamics, there is an inevitable march towards something called the heat death of the universe, you can Google it, in which entropy is a maximum. So processes that increase entropy tend to be favorable. As you saw in an earlier video, it is, of course, possible to expend energy in order to cause a process that is entropically unfavorable, that is, a process for which delta S is negative, to happen. To summarize, processes that are exothermic are enthalpically favorable, while those that are endothermic are enthalpically unfavorable. And processes that result in an increase in entropy are entropically favorable, while those that decrease entropy are entropically unfavorable. In the next video, we'll explore how enthalpy and entropy both interact and allow us to predict or explain the spontaneity of physical and chemical processes.